There you are. I've been here for hours. Ada hasn't shown up. No one has. I don't like this. I don't like this? <laughs> That's right up there with what could possibly go wrong. That's the wench we're looking for. Got her. sent them. Search the bodies. I need to find out where he is. Hiding in the Chantry and sending thugs to finish me off. Coward. He'll not get away with this. Come on. Isabella, should have known you'd find me here. Tell your men to burn the letters next time. Castillon was heartbroken when he heard about the shipwreck. You should have let him know you survived. It must have slipped my mind. <laughs> Where's the relic? I lost it. Castillon's just going to have to do without. Lost it? Just like you lost a ship full of valuable cargo? They weren't cargo, Hader. They were people. Those slaves were worth a hundred sovereigns a head. And you let them scurry off into the wilds. And now the relic's gone, too. Castillon won't be happy to hear that. I promise you. Will someone explain what's going on? Isabella's been a very bad girl. Ruined a perfect business deal, and then ran away. She didn't tell you. I told him enough. Somehow I doubt it. I said I arranged for a duel, which I did. I also said you wouldn't play fair, which you didn't. We can talk later if you want. Right now we have other problems. Castillon isn't a very happy person, is he? Maybe he needs a new hobby. There's only one way to settle this.
I was trying to talk him down. Trust me, it's better this way. Castillon won't hear about me from Hader, but he'll find me eventually. I just have to get him the relic. It's simple as that. What's so interesting about the relic? I don't really know what it is, except that it's ancient and worth my weight in gold. Castion has me chasing it down as payback for freeing his slaves. <sighs> to be honest, I think he just wants me dead. But that would be letting me off easy. You hired Lucky to track down information on the relic. That's right. He insisted he knew everything that was going on in Kirkwall. He lied. <laughs> I bet he doesn't even know everything going on in his pants. Did you end up in Kirkwall because your ship was destroyed? There was a storm. The ship ran aground on the reefs near the city. I managed to make it to shore. Most of my men weren't as lucky. Poor sods. I knew some of those men almost ten years. Oh, balls. What's this about you freeing slaves? I was asked to escort Castillon's cargo ship. I got a bad feeling about the job partway through. Boarded the ship to find slaves. Nearly 200. Elves, humans, children even. It was sickening. They paid Castillon to take them away from the Blight. He took their money and sold them into slavery. Even I know that's wrong. Didn't expect that, did you, Guardsman? If getting the relic gets Castillon off your back, then I'll help you retrieve it. I still don't know where it is, but you'll be the first to know if I hear anything. Anyway, thanks for helping me out with Hader. I think I'll tag along for a while. There might be something I could do for you. And I have a room at the Hanged Man if you're looking for company later. Hello gamers, here is Brigand17. I would like to give you my review on the quest Fool's Rush In. I did love the quest to great amount. What started out as a rather irrelevant quest, questions and answers, basically a very meet and greet, gets us acquainted with Isabella on the side. So if you see the quest, questions and answers in your quest log, follow that lead if you want Isabella in your party. After I've seen all character entrances to the scene, I must say, in my personal ranking the introduction of Isabella was the most spectacular one, followed by Varric's introduction at the beginning of the second act, followed by Aveline's introduction in the first and then the exiled prince. All other potential characters have no big scene whatsoever and just glide smoothly into the story. But more about Isabella. That girl caught our attention here for sure. I can easily understand why she is a favorite with most of the males and even some of the girls. Of course, that has first but not least to do with her tremendous physique. She has got ridiculously oversized boobs, a waist like a hornet and bum and hips like Jalo. All in all, this woman is a digital avatar of a sex goddess. These first impressions are seconded with a gypsy look, piercings and some sharp and pointed daggers that Isabella happens to handle well. All these impressions do tell us, I am self-confident, I do take care of myself, I am dangerous, this is my game and you are not part of it, I am out of your league. Throw her pendant, dirty talk and sexual references on top of it and you have pretty much an irresistible romance choice men want so dearly to be with her and women want to be her. That woman here is what most men would dream about in the morning hours, but mostly never meet in real life. She is the cheerleader we had a crush on in high school. Her offensive, dirty talk is full of sexual references. She is the gal that had sex with the whole football team, or so, rumor says. Easy to have, but not for you. That's because you weren't the quarterback, you weren't even part of the team. You were the nerd at the sideline, with big glasses and into computer games. If we are honest, we would like to have sex with this woman if she was for real, 
but we probably would never marry her. She is easy to catch and near impossible to keep. Men don't like if the initiative is played on them. We want her to be madly in love with us, but we would dump her anyway, because she is inappropriate. If she just isn't helplessly in love with us, we get mad, we feel inferior because we don't have the lead she has. And that's the time when we start to hate her and begin the slutty talk about her and dump her in frustration, and that is the thing where most men fail. We were not man enough, we were not sincere enough, not persistent enough, not in love enough, not passionate enough, not enduring enough and not forgiving enough to see past her bad reputation and oversized tits. So we never get to know her for real. We never will win her heart and having had sex with her doesn't count for anything as we are just a part of a big record, her record. That being said, Isabella is a great and good written character because her character is for real. She isn't the cheerleader with the bad reputation and the big boobs most will never see past. Romancing her isn't easy. It is hard, frustrating at times. A lot of the time romancing Isabella feels less rewarding than romancing Meryl for example, who so easily develops a sweet crush on you. It is easy to bail out after initial sex scene with Isabella and lean towards Meryl midway through the game. I really love the character of Isabella. I can't believe how good written she is and well proportioned, says with a cheeky grin. Follow me for more romance analysis in my playthrough.